guys, my name is Shay and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing Good Trouble Season 3, Episode 13, Making a Metamore. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get it. The episode starts off with Gael and Callie getting it on in the shower. Their steamy shower scene is cut short because Isabella rushes to the bathroom and she's vomiting. Callie tells Gael that he should go out and check on her. And Isabella says that she is having morning sickness. Gael offers to make her some tea and Isabella asks if he wants to turn the water off for the shower. Callie does it from the inside, and I'm just sitting there like, real smooth, Callie. Real smooth. <laughs> and Isabella knows that he is not alone and tells him to finish taking the shower. Gail says that he will go get her some tea, and Isabella whispers to Callie that she's sorry. <laughs> Awkward central. <laughs> Gael comes to Yuri, and he is surprised to see him. Gael tells Yuri that he will take him up on his offer, and Yuri questions him why the sudden change of heart. It flashes to Gael receiving the paternity test results, and he is indeed the father of Isabella's baby. Back to reality, he confesses to Yuri that he is going to be a dad. And I hate that he has to come crawling back to Yuri because he is in desperate need of money right now because of his circumstances. But it is what it is. Andre visits Davia in her classroom to let her know that they have received 63 signatures for their petition. He mentions that he, along with some other students, will be doing a zombie protest during lunch to show that they are against still having the police in their schools. Davia tells Andre that she loves the idea and that she's so proud of him. Matt visits Davia and she is ecstatic about Andre being engaged and that it's all because of restorative justice. In the moment, they hug and they awkwardly pull away, saying that friends are still allowed to hug. <laughs> Kathleen is going over some information to Kelly, Tony, and Rowan in her office. Mariana interrupts her two times, letting her know about some messages, and Kathleen just tells her to bring the phone in her office so she won't have to keep walking back and forth. And the way that Mariana just strolled in the office with the phone was hilarious. <laughs> Kathleen informs them that they will be interviewing some kids who were at the party and saw Tommy and Zach fighting. Their job is to convince these kids to reconsider their statements to the police. It goes back and forth between them interviewing the three kids, who are all guys, by the way. Mariana is texting Callie in the middle of them questioning the kids, and she is giving her expertise on reading these guys. Back to reality, Kathleen tells them that they will be interviewing Tommy's girlfriend, Katie, also, and that she is the closest thing to an alibi. Kathleen tells the group to get Katie to remember that Tommy never left her side. It flashes to them questioning Katie, and Katie says that Tommy was the sweetest person and that she can't see him hurting anyone. She says that Tommy was with her most of the night at the party and that they weren't together the whole time. Katie says that it was an accident and that she knows that Tommy is innocent. She begins to cry and Mariana texts Callie saying that those are fake tears. <laughs> like crocodile tears. <laughs> Deontay and Malika are out on the streets asking people for signatures about budget reform. They are both able to get a full sheet of shit signatures and they are giving each other the googly eyes like whatever. It flashes to Malika telling Deontay that Isaac left the country for six months due to business. He apologizes for him leaving and asks us, what does that mean for them? Malika says that with Isaac leaving, she is choosing to move on with her life. Malika and Deontay have their little moment in her room and moving right along. <laughs> Back to reality, Deontay tells Malika that Tanya, his girlfriend, wants to meet up for drinks, just the two of them. And Deontay says that it's just a thing that they do just to make sure that everybody gets along and that they like each other. Malika says that she's cool with it, and they continue to walk. Mariana is telling Kelly that she believes Katie to be sketch, and Tony and Rowan overhear her saying this. Tony asks Mariana to explain Katie being emotional then, and Mariana begins to cry. Rowan is concerned and asks Mariana what's wrong, and Kelly says that she's just trying to prove a point. <laughs> Mariana says that those were fake tears, like Katie was doing in that room. Mariana questions if Tommy gets convicted, he will be going to jail instead of Juvie. Mariana says that Juvie is pretty scary and that Callie can attest to that. Tony and Rowan are truly loving every single minute of this because Mariana is just spilling all the tea about Callie's personal life. <laughs> She's spilling all of it. Callie suggests that Mariana has phones to answer and Mariana says that she has programmed a new vo forwarding voicemail system. Mariana says that she can be helpful with sleuthing and Callie gives her some documents that need, need to be filed. Kathleen receives a visit from Charles, and Kelly questions them about him. Rowan and Tony says that he was one of the main partners at the old firm, and hints that Charles and Kathleen had a little bit of a fling. Dobby and Matt visits Andre and some other students at lunch. Principal Solomon called some of the students' parents, who made their kids bail on the zombie protest. Of course, the cops offered the students free pizza, which they can't say no, or no to. Dobby apologizes and tells them to not feel discouraged. Andre says that it was a dumb idea, and Davia tells 
him that it's important to fight for what's right and to never give up. Andre and the other students leave to change out of their costumes. Matt holds Davia's hand to comfort her, and this was really cute and soft, by the way. <laughs> Kathleen comes over to Rowan, Tony, and Callie to ask them how the interviews went. They tell her that they don't have any new information, and Kathleen goes off on them. She says that if they can't get some facts from a bunch of kids, then they don't have no business defending anyone. Kathleen tells them to find something to prove that she didn't make a huge mistake taking a chance on the three of them. Kathleen goes to her office and she slams the door and Mariana pages them over the phone saying that Kathleen is a badass bitch. <laughs> I literally cackled so loud when she said that and Tony and Rowan's face along with Callie was just like, you did not just say that. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> Gael's with Yuri in his studio. He is doing different brush strokes on the canvas. Yuri gets frustrated and tells him to stop and tells him to address these invitations for his next show. He says that these invitations need to be handwritten and there's 200, by the way, and they must be done by tomorrow. Like, yikes. Callie comes to Kathleen in her office to check on her. Kathleen says that her therapist will not be happy about her outburst. She says that Tommy's fate is not the only one on the line because they don't win this case. Ken Sung might not tell her where his sister, sister is and prove that she's not dead. She says that she needs Denise Sun to prove that she's still alive, and for that to happen, they'd have to win this case. Callie questions her if this has anything to do with why Charles start by, and it flashes to Kathleen and Charles in her office. Charles informs her that the FBI is investigating the old firm, and they want to look at their books. He tells her that they will soon find out about the skeletons which made them part ways, and says that she needs to fix this. Kathleen says that she appreciates the heads up, and that she is not the only one with some skeletons. Kathleen tells him that she will work on her end and suggests that he do his part. Charles gives her a compliment on her edge and asks her out for drinks. Kathleen says that the door has been closed a long time ago and that his wife wouldn't appreciate that. Charles brings up the fact that Kathleen never cared about his wife before and Kathleen replies that she is trying to redeem herself. And I'm like, okay, for redemption, Kathleen. Okay, <laughs> I see you. Charles leaves and back to reality. Kathleen says that it doesn't have to do anything with Charles and that it was just some housekeeping business pertaining to her exit from the firm. Callie questions her about exactly what housekeeping business, and Kathleen replies that it was an unrelated matter, and that she appreciates Callie's persistence. Kathleen tells Callie that she likes how much she is rubbing off on her, and Callie just smiles. Mariana comes home from work, and Isabella is eating ice cream. She asks Mariana if Callie said anything about this morning, and Mariana says that she didn't. Isabella says with Gael and Callie's schedule being off, she wants to do something nice for them and asks Mariana for her help. Malika goes to meet Tanya for drinks and Tanya gets up to hug her. She asks Malika to tell her more about herself. Mariana and Kelly are in the room and Mariana suggests that she can use her sleuthing skills to do a deep dive into the kids they were questioning earlier about Tommy's case social media pages. Kelly tells her that she would prefer Mariana to use her skills to be professional at work and to not tell all of her business. And Mariana apologizes for that. Mariana brings up the fact that Katie and Tommy's best friend, Zach, never followed each other on any social platform. She gets the feeling that something is up with that, and Callie is intrigued. They both go to their social media accounts, and Callie finds a post with a certain hashtag, and Mariana says that she saw the same hashtag on Katie's account. She suggests that Katie is hiding some secrets on her secret Finsta account with that hashtag, and says that maybe Izzy will do some talking. Malika and Tanya are getting to know each other, and Malika tells her about her many campaigns she is doing with VPN. Tanya says that she admires the work that Malika is doing, and that she would love to offer her area of expertise in marketing and social media. Malika is here for that and encourages her to come to VPN. She mentions that they need to figure out Deontay's mini campaign now, and Tanya is surprised to hear that, and says that he didn't mention it to her. And I could tell that she felt some type of way about that, but she just, you know, kept pushing. Tanya tells Malika that she's glad that they were able to meet, and they cheers. Gael's with Yuri, and he says that he is working on, it, on a new piece for $50,000. Gael offers to help, and Yuri shuts him down with the quickness. He tells Gael that his priority is to finish these invitations, and he throws a stack of them at him, claiming that they are all crap. And I'm like, if anything or anyone is full of crap, it's you, Yuri. Like, please. <laughs> he blew me with a... Gael texts Kelly to not wait up for him, and that he is going to be working late. Davia meets with Andre's mother, and while his mother is worried about Andre having one more strike against him, as she should, Davia says that she just wanted to encourage him because this is the first time that she's seen him really passionate about something. Andre's mother says that if Andre is going to get into organizing and activism, he needs to be mentored by someone who truly knows what that means for him. 
Callie and Mariana meet with Izzy for questioning at the office. Tony and Rowan are watching from afar, and they are already cracking jokes, calling them the Slooping Sisters, and that they would watch that show. And I'm just like, y'all make it fun now, but I guarantee you, they are going to get more information about this case than the two of you combined. And they did. <laughs> Izzy says that Zach and Tommy were always together, and Mariana brings up this fake story of her having this boyfriend named Brad who was always around his guys, and Callie just plays right along. <laughs> Malika and Deontay are having another little moment in her room, and he gets a text from Tanya that reads a hedgehog emoji. He lets Malika know that, that him and Tanya can call on each other when they need emotional support, and that that emoji is like a code word. Malika tells Deontay that he should go be with her, and Deontay thanks her for understanding. And Malika had the nerve to be upset, even though she didn't show it all the way, but she was upset. And I'm just sitting here like, this is the arrangement or love lifestyle that you wanted, sis, so you have no right to be mad about it. You get what you signed up for. <laughs> Mariana takes Callie to the rooftop of the coterie to surprise her with a breakfast date with Gael. <laughs> this is so cute. Isabella tells them that, that she wanted to do something nice for them and that Callie thanks the both of them. They are smiling and cute and it's adorable. They kiss and Callie tells Gael that they haven't really had a chance to talk in a few days. They catch up and Callie gives him some advice to walk into Yuri's office with his head held high and to not let him boss him around. They both agree that they, that they have done enough talking for the morning and they go into his room to make love. And the way that this scene was shot and just the music and everything, it was like something like straight out of like a Grease romance film or something. <laughs> because it was just so well done. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> the next day, Gael comes to Yuri and says that uh, him quitting is that punishment for him quitting doing the imitations. And y Yuri goes to show him to make a paintbrush on a canvas. And Yuri says that him doing that over and over again, it taught him the technique and doing the repetition of the invitations helped him to perfect it. Gael says that Yuri could have just told him that. And Yuri replies that that takes the fun out of it. And I'm like, okay, look at Yuri trying to actually teach him something and be nice. <laughs> okay. Kathleen comes to the group and Callie says that they all discovered a new lead, much to Rowan and Tony's surprise faces. They weren't expecting that. It flashes back to Mariana and Callie questioning Izzy about the hashtag, and she says that she knows nothing about it. Back to reality, Callie says that the private account, along with the hashtag, belongs to Katie. They mention Mariana creating a fake account named Catternight Night Live <laughs> and hoping that Katie will accept the request because she loves cats. Tony and Rowan got a good chuckle out of Mariana's fake Instagram name. <laughs> and so did I. It's funny. Callie suggests that there might be some photos from the party that night that will cast suspicion on Katie. Kathleen says that if they have to infer that Katie is Tommy's killer, they will do that. The guys thank Callie for having their backs, and the girls see that Katie accepted the request on Finsta. They see a photo from the party that night, and Katie does not look happy. They keep, keep on searching through her Finsta, and then it starts to buffer, and they realize that Katie deleted her account. They are all back to square zero, and Rowan asks who is going to break the news to Kathleen, and everyone literally looks at Callie, of course, with her being the favorite, as they love to call her. Malika brings Andre to learn more about the Dandelion Rising program. Back to reality... No, it flashes back to Davia telling Andre's mother that she is not the right person and asks if she can introduce him to the right people to mentor him. Back to reality, there is a group of people in the program and one girl is telling them about how she leads a coalition that makes sure that the black lives truly do matter in schools. She mentions that they were able to end random searches and that target people like them and that they are currently working on getting the police out of their schools. And this is everything that Andre wants and needs to hear and so much more. The shot of Malika getting emotional while hearing them speak and Andre just smiling in pure happiness just did it for me. Like, oh, it was so beautiful to see. <laughs> it really was. Davia and Matt are alone in her classroom and he asks her about how things are going at the Coterie. Davia says that her and Dennis are still friends and that she is still a little confused. Matt says that there is no pressure and Davia thanks him for being patient and he, he really is so patient and just such a good, sweet, caring, amazing guy. He really is and I'm going to keep saying this. Matt says that, they're, says that it's too bad that friends don't kiss, and Davia says that friends can still crush big time. Malika sends Davia a video of Andre at the program and says that he is killing it. Davia is watching in awe and emotional, looking at Andre express himself to the group, and she is such a proud mama bear, and I love it. And I haven't seen her this proud of Andre since he wore that white beater tank top with a bra 
along with the other student in support of her. And they both walked the halls together. So I'm just like, that was a moment. And it just made me love Andre's character so much more after he did that. So much more. Matt asks Davi if she's okay. And Davi says that she is great. Malika is in the conference room at work. And Deontay comes in and he apologizes for having to leave the other night. Malika says that this whole new love style is new for her. And that it's going to take some time. Deontay says that they can just slow things down. And she said that she wasn't really ready to meet Tanya for drinks. And that she didn't want to do Polly the wrong way. Deontay tells her that, that there isn't a right or wrong way to do Polly. Deontay is in the middle of telling Malika something. And he is interrupted by Tanya coming in and saying that she will now be doing some marketing for some of their projects at DPN. And of course, Malika is shocked. And I'm not surprised. But it's like you told her the other night while y'all were having drinks that she that y'all could use her for marketing and social media. So now when she actually shows up, you're at a loss for words. <laughs> But she truly wasn't expecting her, so I'll let it slide. <laughs> I'll let it slide. But in the same way, but not really, Tanya was blindsided with the news of finding out about Deontay's mini campaign. Is the same way that Malika was blindsided with the news of Tanya working at DPN now from Deontay. <laughs> but both of those situations weren't intentional, and they weren't meant to hurt the other. So the episode ends with Tanya saying that she's excited that they all get to work together and she goes to hug Malika and I'm just like, this is going to be great. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great. <laughs> to wrap up this video, I'm going to do three quick things. First, my quick thoughts on the episode. I enjoyed this episode and the storylines. Malika and Tanya meeting was interesting and now all three will, all three of them will be working together. together. That's yikes. Speaking of working together, it was nice seeing Mariana and Callie team up. Davia continuing to help Andre was everything, and I just love the relationship that she has with her students, and you can truly tell that she just loves teaching so much. Gael and Callie were adorable in this episode, and I love them. And I did miss Dennis and Alice in this episode, but it was good to see other character storylines, and they will be back in next week's episode. My thoughts on next week's promo, it shows Mariana and Rowan having a talk, Zumi saying that standing up for yourself is sexy to Alice, and she seems to be flirting with her, or that at least that's what it looks like to me, and I'm just like, okay... Okay, Gael and Callie kiss, and it shows Tony saying that he does, does he know that you're still in love with your ex? And as that scene is playing, it shows Callie and Jamie smiling at each other. And I'm just like, we shall see. Third, I'm going to do a quick rapid fire of the episode. Favorite scene, Gael and Callie's date on the rooftop of the Coterie was super cute. And it was really sweet of Isabella and Mariana to team up and do that for them. So love to see it. Favorite quote, she is a badass bitch. <laughs> I love her, my Mariana. She really had me cracking up this entire episode. Like, man, <laughs> it was hilarious. Favorite duo, Kelly and Mariana teaming up to work together to do some sleuthing work on the case. Even though they actually got a lead, which the Finsta, it fell short because it was deleted. But it was still great to see them having each other's backs and working together. Favorite look, Mariana's office polka dotted blazer was really cute. And it was a really good color on Sierra. WTF moment, Malika and Deontay having the little moment in her room, or little moments in her room, I should say. And I was just watching the scene and just annoyed. And again, I didn't care for it, and never have cared for it, and never will care for it. <laughs> and that's on that. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed my review of The Trouble. I review other shows like Grownish, All American, Riverdale, Legacies, and some other stuff. And if those interest you, please check out those videos on my channel and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, and see you guys next week.